Hi, my name is Shinling and I am the videographer of CJLO's 1690 AM. I am here to present to you the series CJLO Live From Home, which started with Shem G, and today we are presenting La Peluda, who is an amazing artist, and she was generous enough to reach out and to film herself in a live performance in her own living room. And we also had an amazing interview, which will be following the performance video. La Peluda is also in the process of producing her very first album, and there are some songs on here that are going to be a part of that album. So. Stick around and enjoy the show. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Um, welcome to my living room. I am very grateful to have this opportunity to be playing for the CGLO um, platform. I'm very grateful for Shin to be the bridge for this performance to the radio. And um, yeah, I will be playing some songs from my uh, upcoming, upcoming album that I've been writing for the past year that has been uh, dedicated to the healing of uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and sexual violence. So I'll do this shot. Hopefully my neighbors will keep it down.
So, the next song, um, well, that was called Solipsismo, and it's a song that talks about every day, every day is awakening, every day I come into the day into a new perceived Solipsismo. Perception. I don't know. There's so many meanings. I could go on for like 30 minutes, but I only have 20 minutes of film. So the next song is called Hermanes. And uh, I wrote this song in a time of uh, need of solidarity for my experience of uh, sexual violence, my experience of rape. And it felt like I was coming to this song for for some acceptance, for some for a cry out loud to be respected in my truth. So
sí te creo. I believe you. Je te crois. La prochaine chanson, euh, c'est une chanson que j'ai écrite pour m'inspirer un peu dans euh, le quotidien, avoir la fluidité, de la guérison, comprendre qu'il n'y a jamais un, un aboutissement, il n'y a jamais une forme concrète que la guérison, à quoi la guérison ressemble. Puis, euh,
Um, la prochaine, c'est juste un petit poème que j'ai écrit il y a deux ans et demi quand j'étais avec la famille en France. Are you most comfortable in Spanish, like in terms of language or? Um, my first language is French and Spanish. I am most comfortable. I've discovered that I'm most comfortable in singing, singing and composing in Spanish. That's so interesting. Um, yeah, and it was really great to like to, to discover that because I I grew up um, here in in, in Gatineau and and when my parents I would talk to my dad in French I would talk to my mom in, in Spanish and but I would always be like have a very linked uh, I would always be very connected to my my Colombian culture um, but always also very far and I feel like the that. F that desire to to sing in Spanish has really uh, integrated me into this this part of myself and this part of my expression and and a passion and vulnerability and and a hurt also I think it's like when I hear uh, Latin music it's it, there it's so it's so powerful and I feel like for this music it it just flows naturally in spanish and and yeah having having access to to that part of that vulnerability is maybe a privilege for some people but also i i wish that it was i don't i don't wish to have like that that uh it, to, to to for the language to be a, a gatekeeping for for people to have that connection with uh with my experience that maybe and hopefully can uh, resonate with their experience or your experience. So this this album is talking about something so intimate uh, like PTSD and it kind of intersects with your feelings towards Spanish being your like in this very intimate language to you. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering how... So first, I guess, how you came about to, like, learning that you feel comfortable in, like, writing and composing and singing in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And, like, how that sort of, if that process was a part of your album making. Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, I would love to know a little bit about Definitely. Um, well, this album started, uh, the, the I think, 
yeah, the seeds of this album um, were planted like two years ago when I started uh, just playing for the first time on a classic guitar. Um, and I started writing the, the second song that Hermanes Yo Si Te Creo. And it was the first song that really like it, It was a portal for me to for, for the healing and it just came uh, when I went about to, to write the lyrics, it just came very easily to process what I was feeling in Spanish. And um, and and I had seen I, I, I think I had just came back from a trip with my family in um, in Italy or no, I was in, in Spain. Sorry. And uh And there, I saw these these tags in some cities that said "Hermana, yo si te creo," which means "Sister, I, I believe you," and um, and it was for the whole denunciation of, of a lot of uh, sexual uh, aggressions in in the country or in the city uh, by politicians, I think, and um, and that had really like I was like, whoa, that's such a powerful message, and it came back when I needed. To, to process some feelings from, uh, from someone that I knew that had commented on my experience um, and had shamed me into, and, and basically had said uh, the whatever things you can say to blame the victims. And I had, um, and they said it to my partner, and then my partner told me, and I was like, Ooh. so I received it, and I was like, wow, like that, that feels very violent, that feels very, um, very dismissive of, of my experience, and, and, and I just needed uh, something very, very powerful to, to shake myself into the, the, the solidarity for myself and, and compassion for myself and for what I had experienced and and that phrase came and I was like okay I'm just gonna roll into the the Spanish uh, um, fl f flow and um, and yeah and then and then I I tried to to write in French but that was like more I don't know because there are different um, different structures I feel when you write in Spanish, in French, and in English. And for me also, it was the different influences of music. I used to listen to, when I started um, speaking English, I started listening to music that was more pop. When I started, well, speaking French for me is a, is a link to maybe the... Um, the little songs that my dad used to uh, sing to me around the fire, uh, the, the chansons de terroir, or the songs from like, from France, um, uh, colonial songs, and, uh, and all of that, I was like, okay, well, maybe I can use all of these languages and all of these influences within these languages, within the music that the language carries, and, um, and just see how I flow within them. So this album is not only in Spanish, but it's also in French and in English. And it's, it, it represents the different uh, flows that all of these languages um, carry in me. That's really yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And I feel like when you're, when you're speaking about these experiences um, of like, you know, the, the violence that you experienced with when your partner told you that someone has said something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like you've sort of owned that narrative. And I feel like there's such a, like, strong, like a strength and a resilience to the way that you're speaking about these things. But I'm wondering, um, and you said that there's a lot of, like, shaming that happened, right? And I feel like people tend to internalize shame that was coming from an external source. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. if, You know, mm -hmm. if you had a really difficult process of like sort of unlearning that shame, whether that's in regards to this album, like has this album taught you something about shame or mm -hmm. maybe it's in the past, like more in the, in the more distant past. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, I feel like. I feel like shame um, presents itself in so many different ways. 
as sneaky or as obvious as 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 it can be um and it's always a very different process to 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 heal from it because it 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 always presents itself in a different in a different way um and internalizing it for for this specific uh experience for me when i was raped for two years when i navigate it in 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 different waves of of ptsd because it comes and it goes and it comes and it goes um i had the knowledge that it wasn't my fault and also i had at some point i was like wow i am responsible for my my sexuality and and that kind of as much as i was like i am responsible for my body for myself um that tricked me a part of me that that knowledge tricked me into being like wow so maybe i'm responsible for what happened to me and and that's a way of like that shame molded itself into into in for me into this experience um so that was that was very painful to to have that feeling but also the the other part of me that knew that um i am responsible for myself and for my healing and um but i am not responsible for the actions that this person um pressured onto me and um and otherwise i think that shame for people like me in their sexual i mean we, we i feel like we learn sexuality through a lens of shame so it's almost like even if you are sexually assaulted or not you will probably hopefully not but probably feel ashamed of whatever practice of whatever uh um desire you have and that for me is all is still still present and i'm still trying to unlearn it every day um but yeah in in feeling in being uh sexually assaulted i i do like now have this boundary boundary where i don't want to allow any anyone or anything um that's not helping me to heal and i just i just want to be like i, I don't take that I, that's i could like no <laughs> no 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 because um and and i try to heal with the person that brings it on to me but sometimes i'm just like i can't you know i'm not i'm not responsible for for what you bring on to me i'm just i will i will i will try to to do my best to, to heal from everything yeah <laughs> thank you for that and i'm wondering if um if other people's music has helped your healing journey because i guess because mm. you're making music about ptsd which i assume yeah. will help a lot of people feel like at, like you know at most kind of like healing people even quite literally um but at, at the least sort of have someone to resonate with um in in the music industry right and i'm wondering if another person another artist has done sort of a similar thing for you um so many so many but not that i knew the the baggage that the music carried like for them personally um i one of my biggest influence was um was la sadecela when i started uh writing the song and that's like <laughs> that's beautiful sad nostalgic uh music and for me it's like it was very heart opening it, it helped me to accept what i was feeling and accept the feelings accept the emotions accept the hurt the pain the confusion um so honestly so many artists like from from the Eddie Gorme los panchos when i cook and i put 
uh, the old um, boleros that my grandma used to used to listen to, um, and I dance. That's that's a form of healing. Also, that's a form of like just ah oh, okay whatever. I'm just I'm having anxiety and I'm just gonna dance it out. Yeah, nobody that has actually like said this is what happened and I am healing from this that I know of. Um, but music is so healing. Music and 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 nature and nature for me that's been it's been a big 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 help to just dissociate from the concepts of social interactions and just like be in nature and feel like everything everything is embodied and everything is is safe yeah that's been, that's been good i really <laughs> love that i love that you sort of spoke about like joy from like mm -hmm. listening to older music that your grandmother yeah. played and like I feel like those are things that could really bring you joy and I feel like there's this right. sort of not an expectation but um an image of people who experienced trauma to con to always feel traumatized and there's not a mm -hmm. lot of representation about like joy um mm -hmm. Yeah, among people who have PTSD or just in general, like people who have experienced mm -hmm. terrible traumatic events. Mm -hmm. So that's really that's really awesome that you brought that up. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, yeah, I feel like also it's hard to 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 know how how to feel joy within with within the the process of of healing from from traumatic events because I feel like it's it 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 might be a spiral for some people that just like brings you brings you deeper and deeper into into whatever whatever is going on within your within your body within your mind and um and i feel like yeah as as a community or as for within the people that we surround ourselves with sometimes it's we don't have the the tools to um, to make space for everything that we are feeling in order to to allow ourselves to maybe move not move on but but feel something else than um the impact the shock and uh and yeah it's true we don't have a lot of um i mean i feel like we we do but it's just not talked about I feel like in everyone, in everyone now, I see, I see the pain. In everyone now, I, I can, I can make space for 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 the part of them that has been affected by a trauma. And I don't even know it, and I don't even need to know it. I just know that making space for that, for that part of them that might be there, um, allows me to like also make space for me and be like okay it's all, we're all we're all trying to to heal and do our best and and make the best out of this moment that we can't even comprehend sometimes what's happening yeah and i feel like there's such a i don't know i feel like society currently has a really difficult time holding space for a lot of emotions in general not just mm. with trauma right and I'm wondering, because if I think of the way that a lot of Western cultures deal with emotions, it's always to numb mm. and to, yeah, like to forget. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like you're, there's this softness that you carry when you're showing your vulnerabilities in, in the most resilient way. Like you, you've reclaimed that sort of softness and, mm. you know, struggles, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm wondering, like, because that sort of translates to your music as well. I feel like there's a really soft, like, delicate, delicate mm -hmm. quality to your sound. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't really know where my question is going. I feel like there's just a really strong difference between the softness that you carry, both in your music and as a person, versus, like, a lot of music that's currently um popular that can be very loud and like it's sort of mm -hmm. engineered to be loud to grab mm -hmm. attention right so I guess mm -hmm. my question is like 
is there an intention behind your softness and like yeah and I would love for you to talk a little bit more about softness as a whole <laughs> definitely yeah. definitely um wow these songs are the representation of me there's a word in Spanish that's uh that says arur arur arurujar and it's like when you um how was this word when you cradle like cradle yeah cradle yeah, yeah. And uh, so these songs are like the representation of me cr cradling myself in times of, of pain or, or sadness or confusion. And, and for me, and as you said, there are a lot of people that um, the, their healing process is through um exercising their their angerness or their their frustration or whatever feeling they they have for me i it, it came more naturally um to to be tender with myself because the violence reverberated in me and and I needed, I needed to, to, to have, to create a space of active listening, of calm, of patience, and of ten tenderness for myself. I needed to be the, this, this self that enveloped my, me and just l told me, let loose. Like, meet yourself in, in, in a way that is the most accepting of whatever you're receiving and uh yeah so that that was like the, these songs are just the collection of of what i needed for myself yeah i guess my last question for you is about your writing and your music making process mm -hmm. um what that looks like and i guess also since covid is you know, it's happening. Um, I'm wondering if your process has changed and adapted and evolved um, since the mm. pandemic. Yeah, I would love for you to talk about that. I have not been writing since since COVID started. Like, one song, maybe. <laughs> um, and it was to process jealousy, um, which I was feeling a lot during the, the, the summer but i haven't the most of these songs are like well actually you know i just lied because no <laughs> i i did finish some songs wow okay i totally forgot about them um yeah no um i have different different processes i, I feel like i haven't really been um what made me say no i haven't written a lot was that the way that I used to write before COVID isn't the same so maybe I don't like acknowledge it as much um I it used to be like I'm trying to learn guitar and I uh, come up with this riff that I'm that I'm trying to practice with my skills and and then maybe I'm like oh I like it and then I, I try to practice it and practice it so that it becomes uh, more fluid so then I can um step away from thinking too much with the guitar and and embark on maybe a, 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 a melody that comes naturally uh, or lyrics so so that is one part i have some songs that um i kind of like redid that my mom and my dad used to sing to me uh to go to sleep so i rewrote that so that was like a very interesting process of of taking a melody and 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 a structure of an already written song and rewrite uh so that i could like just represent what i wanted to to say um and for one of those songs uh the one that is in french I collaborated with my friend Maxim Brown, who's a who's a poet, a writer, and a singer songwriter, and uh, and yeah, and we would just like meet up for hours and talk about a section of a song, and and uh, and he would 
like take some time and and write some lyrics on on his part and we would collaborate like that because I didn't feel like I had a lot to say with the French words I was like oh like I it's just stuck and French for me felt very uh, elitist when I would write and I would like criticize myself um Or, and sometimes for this one song, I think the first song, Solipsismo, uh, that, I, that I sang on, on the video, it was just, uh, it came to me, it, it was literally a dream that where, when I died um, and I was really chill in, the, in, in being dead and being like just my conscious floating around, I was like, okay. So when I woke up, I was like, wow, that happened and I want to present it in a song. And, and I had like this little piece, these little, just like four lines. And they stuck, I was stuck in those four lines for like months and months. And I would go outside during the winter and lay in, in the snow and be like, shit, like what, what else do I want to say? And just, uh, and try to, try to talk to myself. And, and all of these, like this are, are the songs and I try to ha have them like available visually for me so that I can process them and um yeah it's like it just I I try to be as uh spontaneous as possible or just when when I want want to feel creative in any way possible I try to allow myself to be curious in that way so it, it's really however it shows up I take it and I'm like I try to I try to have enough confidence in myself so that I I assert the words and I, I sometimes it's like oh I, I'm gonna criticize the word before writing it and I'm gonna like push it aside and then I'm like no no you shouldn't do that like you should you should write it down it's okay it's allowed you're good <laughs> so yeah it's 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 such a big learning process I really love that Yeah, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Like, I feel like that's such a vulnerable and, like, authentic process. Like, how you talked about <laughs> laying in the snow. I feel like I really, I really enjoyed hearing that story. <laughs> oh, sh yeah, it was, it was, that, that was fun. That was fun. Yeah, that's awesome. I feel like you're, you're making it a point even to sort of listen to yourself. And I feel like that's really, really beautiful. So, like, thank you for sharing that with us. Sure. Um, and with that, I sort of wanted to ask uh, where people could find your music, if people wanted to like follow you, uh, where could they do that? And like, yeah, to stay in tune with all of your music things. <laughs> yeah. Right now, I'm mostly um, available on Instagram. I don't have uh, any other platform because I don't I haven't released any of the music. Um, I will, I'm gonna, just gonna release possibly just like the whole thing all at once. Um, so yeah, on Instagram, on my, my channel Pelo Oscuro, and uh, I, there are some, some little IGTVs that, that I've captured that are really, that people can maybe listen to while, while we, we all wait, because <laughs> even I'm waiting. <laughs> so yeah, on Instagram. Or Facebook under La Peluda. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for, for sure. being here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for like allowing me to, to do this. I don't know. I feel suddenly like I should like say thank you to everyone like at an award show. But uh but you but can I do will. that. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Uh, oh damn! Wow, there are a lot of people. There are a lot of people that came into this this whole process. Everyone in my life has been a very, a very important piece of of making this. From like my roommate who told me, "Hey, you should maybe go and get a grant," uh, which allowed me to pay all of the musicians and and actually like maybe um, allow myself to really get into the motivation of making an, an album it's like my parents my brother who i'm making a video of one of the songs with an animation which i'm really excited to to do that 
with uh, Fred, the bassist, my bassist, and Zach, and Mathieu, and Gabby, and Rachel, who's helping me on the production, and so many people that I'm, I'm getting to connect with um, via, via, by distance. Um, but I'm so, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really excited for like, not for this project, not ju just to represent me, but everybody who's who might have uh, encountered me within within that process and has honored me in that. It feels very, very great to be surrounded by all of these people that I love deeply, deeply. So sweet. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you to all. <laughs> Thank you. Very grateful.